Welcome to Bug Watch with Swissly. I'm your biophone boy, Davey, and this show is all about Tyranids. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at last week's best and most interesting Tyranid lists. Then we'll have a look at the lists that have been submitted for the weekend ahead of another big weekend in Arcs of Omen. Uh, tell me what you think of these lists. I want to hear what your opinions are. Um, so pop any, any, any thoughts in the comments and give us a like as well so we can get more hive minds involved. Uh, if you have any more feedback or questions or you'd like your list to be featured, uh, drop it in the comments below or give me a message and a follow on Instagram at It's Swissly, I-T-S Swissly. Without further ado, let's get into the lists. All right, so let's have a look at list one. Uh, this is Martin van der Most from last weekend's Rottenhammer event um in the netherlands um he's taken obviously a heavy support axe of omen list it's high fleet chronos with territorial instincts so that they get obsec uh, monsters uh, essentially uh, so everything all your monsters have obsec five unless they've got less than 10 wounds you have obsec one he's gone for a hive tyrant with uh, the relic shard gullet he's also then gone for an, um another hive tyrant with the Bailthorn cannon who is his warlord I think that's because the Bailthorn kind of maybe has a longer range, so you can sit back and just pop from further back uh, versus the Shard Gullet. He's then got uh, a Neurothrope uh, with the Resonance Barb, so that Neurothrope is going to get plus two to cast rather than plus one. Gets another spell as well, which is quite interesting, but it's not featured on his list. Um, what's interesting about this, or, or how I use it anyway, is Onslaught is a seven to get off, and the Resonance Barb, barb essentially makes it a five, which is really good. Also, in a list like this, your Neurothrope can actually hide behind all the big monsters coming in um, and, and easily get that warp ritual off without getting taken out. Um, or Psychic Interrogation, the same deal. Then moving into Fast Attack, um, he's got a Morlock. We're seeing more lists coming up with Morlocks. Uh, I think with Behind Enemy Lines potentially being an option for a lot of lists, that's quite good. But in this list, uh, being able to come up from underground and do mortals to everyone and potentially get his big toe onto a objective you know that's fantastic for stealing someone's home objective so definitely uh, a good shout uh, if for those poorly defended um home bases and then we go into heavy support we've got three can effects with heavy set uh, with enhanced senses so they hit on threes and heavy venom cannon um yeah i mean these are great we know they're great uh, interesting though one has not got enhanced senses i assume he ran out of points um but that one could potentially sit next to one of the hive tyrants getting reroll ones to hit which kind of improves its efficiency a little bit. He's then got two exocrines, um, Screamer Killer with Adrenal Glands and Toxin Sacks because let's just pump him up with everything he can have. Um, and then two Tyrannifexes with Acid Spray who are obviously obsec five. They'll go and sit on an objective and you know your opponent has to take that absolute beast off, off it, which is really not easy. Easier said than done. Um, this list starts with two CP, <clears throat> which is... It is, it is good, actually, because I don't think the Kronos lists are as uh, CP hungry as other lists. I think that's because their stratagem isn't as good as uh, other Tyranid high fleets. So it only works when you've got psychers, etc. Um, you will be using one a turn probably for something like uh, Transhuman, um, maybe even Fight on Death with one of the high tyrants, things like that. So not as thirsty, and you'll be able to leisurely go through your game without... Uh, you know, really needing to spend CP. Um, so a little bit about this list. Uh, it's it's at Rottenhammer, as I mentioned before, which has 100% of the sexiest Anthro Mission Pack I've ever seen. It looks fantastic. It's clearly done by someone who knows how to use Photoshop. Very impressive. Um, Martin went 4-1 with this list, losing only to the player that came second, uh, who was using Deathwing at the event. Uh, he did beat a Deathwing list on the way, though, so he learned his lessons after that game and and, uh, and and took them forward. The terrain for this event was UKTC-esque, is, is what, how I would describe it. It's the same kind of layout as the UKTC, but some of the terrain pieces were different sizes. Uh, what is interesting about that is is it's quite it can be quite difficult to you know get loads of uh, larger bases, monsters, things like that around the terrain pieces, but Martin seems to have done a great job with it here. Um, in terms of Kronos as well, so that uh, gives him extra four inches to his range. Now, if you look at this list, it has all the guns that you want to have this ability on. It's got the Shard Gullet, the Bailthorn Cannon, 
Um, obviously the extra crins as well, getting an extra two inches. Not they've got quite a long range, but I think that takes it to like 42 inch range, which is pretty good. Um, so he's going to pepper you from the back of the board if he ha if he wants, while some of the other units move forward and take the middle. Um, you also have that CP for extra crins to move and shoot without uh, taking penalty, and they get sixes exploding shooting. So that's probably one of the, those stratagems that it'll lean into a little bit. Um, the other thing about this this uh, event as well was it was quite a shooty meta, um, and he beat he was like four or five guard players out of maybe twenty ish players, so really really shooty. He actually beat a guard player on his way to uh, to this to, the, to his final placing, so very impressive. He also beat <clears throat> a vote analyst, although I would say it was probably more of a fighty vote analyst, um, so very impressive. Uh, let's move on to the next list. <clears throat> so this is Jacob Holstrom. Um, representing the team NOD. No idea what that stands for, so do let me know. Um, he's taken Elites and he's taken Behemoth with, again, Territorial Instincts, so giving those monsters obsec. Uh, so this one's a little bit of a different take on a um, Territorial Instincts list. So we've got in his HQs a Broodlord um, with Monstrous Musculature, musculature that and what that does is i believe it gives all of his weapons plus one damage really strong in a broodlord um because broodlords actually have you know pretty good ap a lot of attacks but they only do one damage so like they don't really uh, threaten marines as bad as as say other characters so i think having this relic on this character is pretty good broodlords also pretty good at doing things like war ritual psychic interrogation because it can forward deploy um what I would say with that is it also can get slapped very quickly if you forward deploy it too far and it just gets charged turn one. He's then got two Hive Tyrants, so he's paying the extra CP for the extra Hive Tyrant. Uh, both of them with Heavy Venom Cannons and Bone Swords. Uh, different spell layout, so um, you know a lot of the uh, a lot of the five casting costs in there, except for Paroxysm, which is a nice to have a lot of the time. Um, but getting that off is really super annoying because it's a seven. And, you know, it's a coin flip as to whether you actually get that spell off or not. Um, on one of the Hive Tyrants, he's taking direct guidance. That gives him plus one to hit. Really strong on some of these Gene Stealer units that we're about to talk about because they hit on threes. So super good in that sense. Um, and then he's got a Neurothrope who will, you know, support these Hive Tyrants in getting their spells off and the, and the Broodlord in as well um, by having um, the Synaptic Tendrils. So he'll be able to give or she, it will be able to give the Hive Tyrant or Broodlords, uh, 3d6 to cast, dropping one of the dice. And you'll be able to do that twice. So really strong. Um, then we've got Death Leaper with Alien Cunning. So he's Obsec 5. Now you definitely give this Alien Cunning to, generally speaking, to Death Leaper or the Parasite and Mortrex. Um, and it gives it Obsec 5. It just makes them super, super good. Death Leaper in uh, Behemoth is also super strong because he gets the plus one strength. So it takes him to strength 8. So he's wounding knights, things like that on threes. In, then we get to 10 Gene Stealers, 10 Gene Stealers, 9 Gene Stealers. I assume it's because you can fit that extra Gene Stealer in on the on the third squad. And these are just pretty good in um, in Behemoth. So really, really nice to see them being used again because they've been pretty lackluster for the entire edition uh, before, after the book came out. Then we've got two Maliceptors. you love to see it. Absolutely stomping up the board, doing psychic actions and uh, and doing mortals to everyone within 12 inches. Then we've got that Morlock again. Wonder if this is going to become a, a staple, but you know, doing the same thing here. And then uh, Tyrannosex with uh, Tyrannosex, not a Tyrannosex, that's a different thing, um, with Acid Spray and a four up invul to keep it alive that a little bit longer. So what do I think about this list? Well, um, Behemoth obviously gives that extra strength in the first round of combat. That's great on all them gene stealers. It's not even terrible on the Maliceptor because it takes it to strength eight as well, I think. Um, but those gene stealers going into things like Marines, they go to strength five. Then with the Behemoth Stratagem, you can get plus one to wound and you're wounding Marines on twos, which is super good with three AP. Amazing. So you're just, you're just absolutely tearing through them. Um, whether or not they trade efficiently enough is a question I would have. Um, but he came third. So who am I to talk? He came third uh, with only a loss to Dark, Dark Angels and a draw versus Iron Hands. They were using WTC scoring, so it was quite easy to get a draw here. Uh, I'm unsure on the terrain. It's not featured in the pack, unfortunately, or there isn't a pack I could find. Um, so unable to give a bit of commentary on those. But what I would say is he did beat Dark Angels. He did beat Death Guard and uh, Harlequin's play on the way to the final, uh, on, on the way to his third place finish, rather. 
The Death Guard one's quite interesting because the uh, I bet he really wanted to play things with two wounds for the uh, for the Brood Lord with the monstrous musculature. Uh, and Death Guard obviously minus one damage. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I imagine he didn't really play much of a role in that game. Although I would love to hear if he did. <clears throat> um, so yeah, um, the, the problem with, uh, you know, some of the um, the problem I've found with lists like this sometimes is um, is that you can do so many mortals in the psychic phase, so the Maliceptors and these Hive Tyrants, et cetera, that actually the, ch the units you want to charge with these Gene Stealers end up out of, you know that you make your charge harder and it's one of the things that kind of makes me think like is there a way to optimize this a little bit however a third place finish is nothing to sniff at so he should be really really proud of how he's performed here um so yeah great let's move into the next list samuel pope um representing the team militaries and diorama sure that sounds cool um and we're back to old faithful Leviathan with its adaptive uh, uh, reroll hit um, with every with every gun um, and every attack rather. So very uh, consistent with its damage there. <clears throat> In HQs, we've got Hive Tyrants with Adrenal Glancing Toxin Sacks because you want it to kill absolutely everything. Um, and then the Relic Shard Gullet, which is something we're seeing quite often, and the Warlord Trait Adaptive Biology. And what this is going to do... Um, is just just make it a little bit sturdier when it walks up the field um it has got its tyrant guard here but you know the tyrant guard don't always stay alive you may, might want to be using them to fight and actually just having that ability there just makes it a little bit more uh, durable um then we've got the neurothrope who has synaptic tendrils again buffing all the psychers around it so we can get those psychic actions off a little bit easier and then we have the turbigan um who has adrenal glands taking up to strength eight or nine rather um with its scything talent so it gets all the attacks and strength nine which is really good um it's got the more claws of thyrax and heightened senses and what this is doing is giving it full rerolls to hit and full rerolls to wound so it just makes it a little bit of a slap monster um because i feel like sometimes it can fall a little bit flat when it's in combat but with this kind of uh, reliability around it it feels like it comes a little bit more into its own then we have the 30 termagants that go with the turbigan 10 gargoyles probably to screen um you know hold objectives far away etc then we're going to another double maliceptor you love to see it um three tyrant guard who are going to keep that type tyrant alive three venom throps who are going to make everything a little bit harder to hit I'm a big fan of venom throps and taking a couple of units at the weekend um and he, he, he deep he, he reached deep into his pocket deep deep into his pocket and he said here's 210 points give me them zone throps i want that in Vaughan. and you cannot blame him it's very good um he's then got a mucolid spore which i'll be quite honest a lot of people take these i have no idea why i think it must be a screening thing or something um or maybe stopping um, opponents forward for uh, advance uh, you know pre-game moving things like that towards you and then he's ended it with an exocrine with voracious ammunition just because an exocrine doesn't do him enough damage um but i see a lot of people take that and i think it must be pretty strong so this list has a kind of like castle Death Star vibe, denying your opponent's primary with the Turbigan, mortaling the living daylights out of them with the Maliceptors, and then shooting them with the Shard Gun and Exocrine. It's it seems like it's it's super super Death Star, just moving forward with the minus one to hit from the Venom Throps, um, maybe even a psychic action for minus one strength on shooting attacks incoming. Very nice. And this is just basically Leviathan doing what they do best. He's really built into that. Put yourself in front of the opponent and say. How are you going to solve this problem? There's a lot of wounds here. We're very difficult to kill. Come at me, bro. Um, Samuel, in this event, beat Grey Knights, Tau, Black Legion, and Dakari, which is, you know, probably the most, <laughs> like, what a range of, uh, of opponents. And he only lost to GSC, which, you know, is easy to do. You can have a look at uh, this week's battle report on 6++, and you can see me getting beat by Tom's GSC. Um, yeah, pretty uh, it's, it's a difficult matchup for most people because you don't play them that often but then when you do if you are prepared to do it you've got a chance but if you don't play them that often then it's just you just get bad but overall overall samuel at this event there was a significant amount of people there i think it was over 40 had a very good fourth place finish so well done to samuel all right so that's with the past this is all the past davy tell me about the future what is coming this way well let's have a look Here's three lists that are coming up for this weekend. And not one of them is mine, by the way, because I'm not as egotistical as to put my own list on my own show. All right, number one, we've got 
Matt Palmer, I do know Matt, to be fair. He's from Trash War Gaming. Those guys are really great. They come from the Leicester area. I don't know, Derby. They're all the same to me, those towns. Um, he is taking an Axe of Omen Elite, and it is Kronos again. So Kronos, you know, very much like buses. You don't see any of them for the entire edition, and then they all come at once. Um, he's also gone for Territorial Instincts because he loves those obsec monsters. Um so what are we looking at in this list? He's got his Tyrant Guard. He's got his Hive Tyrants with Shard Gullet and Adaptive Volagy, like the last list we looked at. He's got another Hive Tyrant with Pathogenesis, which I believe means he automatically wounds when he hits, which is really, really obnoxious. Um, so very, very, uh, very nice. And again, a not often seen Relic, but very strong. Um, he's then got a Neurothrope uh, with Resonance Barb again. I think he's using that to uh, obviously get off his Paroxysm, but mostly to make sure he gets off his psychic actions as they kind of as it kind of hides behind the monsters moving up the battlefield we've then got 10 hormigants uh, i imagine there he's screening guys again three turning warriors because he was like you know what i don't care they've gone up in price i am paying for these venom cannons i'm paying for these death spitters i'm having them except when he got to the second squad and he put two scything talons on one of them i imagine he ran out of points then this absolute baller of a person has taken three lictors and three times two pyrovos, which awesome. Yeah, cool. Let's. What, what's that doing? Um, well, I think the lictors are going to get you your behind enemy lines, uh, either by deep striking in or just running up the battlefield, hiding behind monsters, and then just you know moving ten inches into your opponent's deployment zone, scoring you three points, um, and being very difficult to shoot because if you're not within twelve inches, you can't target them. The two, three times two pyrovos. I think these are probably mixed rules in a sense. So they're going to move forward to get rid of some of the chaff. Um, but they're also, you know, great at screening. So you're only, it's not a lot of outlay for these units. And they're just going to, they could sit and just screen out an objective, which is fantastic. Then we've got a fast attack. We've got a Morlock, because, you know, why leave home with that one at the moment, apparently? Um, and we also have a Parasite of Mortrex with Alien Cunning. I love the Parasite. I love Death Leap. If I had to choose one, it's the Parasite. Uh, it's just so fast. It's so fast, guys. It just goes where you want it to go. And finally, we've got uh, heavy support, two Tyrann effects, one of them with Varish's ammunition, uh, just to do those extra couple of mortals. So yeah, really interesting list. Um, I'm very keen to see how Matt does with this. Um, it's it, it, it's it clearly doesn't like rolling to hit. That's why he's got so many flamers in here. He's just like, no, rolling to hits for chumps. I'm just going to get in here and, and acid everything to death. Um, and of course, that leans really well with that leans really well into the Kronos ability of plus four um, inch on his shooting. And of course, one of the not often talked about things on Kronos is the one CP stratagem to um, absolutely annoy psychers around you um, by whenever they fail a psychic test, you just do mortals to them. And then whenever they cast after that, if they fail it after that, they also take mortals. So it's really, really nice, uh, especially the Grey Knights. If Grey Knights start becoming a thing, I'm I'm going to be giving that one big loving eye to Kronos. Um, one big loving eye, definitely not in the script here. Um, uh, the Warriors too are obviously benefit from that as well as uh, as well as Shard Gullet, but the Warriors aren't as consistent um, and neither is Shard Gullet. I found, you know, it's, you can roll ones. You're rolling six dice, right? Three to hit, three to wound. You're going to roll ones at some point. Um, so, and then they have four up invulns because you're not shooting at anything that doesn't have an invuln realistically. So you tend to maybe do five damage. So not my favorite thing in the world at the moment. So yeah, with this list, I think Matt's mixing a few strategies together. So he's going to go and take the mid board with his monsters. Um, he's going to get in your deployment zone with his lictors for behind enemy lines. And you can, as I say, you can deep strike them in or sneak them up. Uh, there's a few different strategies. And I think he's just giving himself the option to flex here. It's a very cool list. I would hate to see this list come up against Tau. It would be just sh like th those Tyrannophyxes would be just absolutely beasted. But it's a very cool list. Um, his first round is into White Skies, which I feel like plays right into his strategy. So good luck, Matt. Um, go and smash him. Uh, the second last list we're looking at today is Ian Weber Davies. Uh, he's described his list as big stanky bugs. So it is a territorial instincts list again as Gorgon. I won't go, I won't spend too much on this because it's. Um, it's very much a similar strategy to a lot of the other lists we've seen. However, some of the call-outs, he's got a Malin throw up in there. I would love to make that work. A Horror Specs, I'd love to make it work. A Toxicrate, love to see it. I don't think it's making it out of his deployment zone unless there's no terrain, but because it, it, it is huge if you have not seen it, it's gigantic. Um, so yeah, really fun list. Uh, best of luck to Ian. 
Um, I hope he absolutely smashes it with these units because it would be great to see them become competitive. Um, but for his opponents, it's a tough list to kill. It's really tough to kill, but it's also really difficult to win with because it doesn't really do much in the way of primaries. Uh, sorry, secondaries. So uh, it might perhaps get out scored. But good luck, Ian. I'm with you, bro. Let's do it. Last one, Craig Hodgson. Um, he's uh, another favourite list for this week, um, heading to the Stonehammer event. So he has taken Highfleet Gorgon with Unstoppable Swarm and pour one out for this guy as he moves 90 Gaunts around the table and somehow only gives up 123 wounds on, on uh, no prisoners. Very impressive. Um, so it's Highfleet Gorgon with Unstoppable Swarm. So the Highfleet Gorgon piece really leans in well to the, hom the Hormigans with Toxin Sacks. For one CP, they auto wound on fives. I hear that's really good nowadays. And then with Unstoppable Swarm, he gets to move all of those um, uh, those swarm units uh, up the bars before the game even starts. So he's just going to take up, you know what Craig's going to do? He's coming to get you. He's he's coming to get you with this list. He's going to move before the game. He's going to be moving his movement phase. He's going to outscore you in primary when he brings back Gaunt onto your, set, onto your um, objectives. It's going to be very exciting. He's even got Pyrovars here to screen out his backfield while the rest of his army absolutely yeets into your deployment zone. I am very looking forward to seeing how this list does. Um, I playing something not too dissimilar to this myself this weekend. So best of luck to Craig. And that's all the lists. So, hey, thanks for watching and listening the first ever Bug Watch with Swissly. Uh, get your binoculars out, find out all those lists. Um, big thank you to all the generals I featured today. And for those going into this weekend's game, absolutely the best of luck. I genuinely hope you absolutely smash it. I'll be rooting for you. Enjoy the weekend, guys. See you next week.